Okay, this is part two of video editing on Linux with Caden Live. Now, uh, I figure why not edit video one as video two's demonstration. Uh, so here we are, I have Caden Live open. I also have my file browser open. I wanted to show you because last time we clicked here uh, to import videos, but you can also just drag and drop the files. So here's my intro video, my intro clip. And it's gonna ask me, do I wanna switch uh, and I'm going to say no. I'm going to stick with my defaults for this because uh, my intro video is 24 frames a second and my final video is going to be 29 frames per second. Uh, and then I'm also going to drag and drop. Uh, oops, I just. Let's see. Originals. And here is. This is the video right now that we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, it's made a uh, thumbnail already, so this is actually being recorded right now. If I click on that, you can see the file size getting bigger, I'm sure. But let's go ahead and grab video number one. So this is, if you watch video one, uh, you've this is before I've actually finished editing it. Is that a little weird? Uh, so I have those two videos there. I'm going to, again, expand my timeline here because I like, uh, like it a little bit bigger there. And I'm going to drag my intro here, my video here. And you know what, I was using a new setup for my recording and the volume looks kind of low, which means this video is probably going to be kind of low too. Um, I need to boost the audio on my mic. Because uh, you can just see how loud the music is here and how low this is. And people like to complain about audio if you're not perfect with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim a little bit here because you can see where I start talking. And if I go to the end here, you can say this is me saying, as always, have a great day. So I'll put this here. Now, we're going to start working with transitions and fades and stuff like that. So right now, I can press play. OK, here we are working in Live. The audio isn't that, that bad, but it is a difference. The intro video is a little bit louder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the intro video here and then up in my effects panel and that might, you might have to click on a tab here because I've pulled this out into a separate little uh, display here. And up here you can just search through your effects and I'm going to type in volume and there's a few different volume options. We're going to pick uh, volume keyframeable. Now there's a few things you can do here. I can drag and drop it here or if I have this selected already I can just double click it. And right away you can see our volume controls here. And it's for this this um, this clip right here. So this is keyframeable. So I can create different keyframes and make the volume go up and down. But I'm just gonna go to the first frame and I'm going to, there's already a keyframe put at the first frame. And I'm going to lower this eight decibels. Okay, and if I want, I could probably boost it. I, I, I usually try avoiding boosting the audio at all because then it can start hearing some humming and static, but I'll bump it up two decibels. Great. Okay, here we are. Okay, now you notice that's a, a hard cut from this clip to this clip. I want it to fade. Well, as long as the, the clips are, oops, I should also say, you can grab your keyframes here. And so if I was to add another keyframe, here, I can go like this and I can add another keyframe here and another keyframe here. And if I back out a little bit, you can see those blue dots. So you can actually manually adjust your keyframes here, how loud they are and where they are. And I'm just going to press Control Z to undo those keyframes and click here and Control Scroll to zoom back in. And when your clips are overlapping like this, all you have to do is click in the corner of the top video here and we've added a dissolve. So now, if you watch our preview there, you can see it fading as I drag, and I'm just dragging with my mouse here. So, now, I do wanna mention buffering. So now if I click halfway through this dissolve and press spacebar to play, it's gonna play a little jerky. You know, and depending on the speed of your computer, it may be jerkier than other things. And the more layers you have, if you have uh, a lot of effects going on, things can play rather jerky, so watch. But it actually played pretty smooth, so it made me a liar. But if you ever have an issue where you go to preview like uh, dissolve like this, and you put it right there and press that and it plays jerky, you need to give it a chance to buffer. And best way to do that is just go back a little bit. Instead of clicking right here, click here. 
and that will give the single track time to play and buffer that effect. So if you're having transitions run jerky, that's one thing you can do. You know, also depends on the speed of your computer. And that's just a preview. If it plays jerky in the preview, doesn't mean it's going to play jerky when you render it out. It should be smooth. So we have that. Now I'm going to click over here and scroll in. And I'm going to add a dissolve over here. So now it's going to dissolve back. But the audio for this one's still out. So I'm going to click that, double click here. I'm going to click here to go back to the first frame of that clip where we have a keyframe or a set. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to adjust this one down eight decibels. I don't have to do anything with this because it's already up eight decibels. Uh, from its original keyframe. Oh no, I hit Control Z, so it undid that. Our two decibels. We'll move that up just a teeny tiny bit. So, so yes, that's. As always, and I hope that you have a great day. I actually cut myself off there, saying and have a great day. Uh, I just probably just stopped recording a little too soon. Let's go ahead and drag this over a little bit, though. Yeah, I must have canceled the recording before I finish saying that. Nothing I can do about that except for maybe record it right now and put it in, but I can't do that because I'm recording this video so my microphone's being used. Anyway, so that's that. Now, let's say there, there, there are a lot of effects here, so I can clear out my search here and you can go through. There's audio effects and video effects up in here, contrast, equalizing, grayscale, hue shift, all these things. So, for example, We'll just use some here. I'm going to select my uh, intro or extra video uh, right here. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to double click grayscale. And now it's grayscale. And some effects have options, some don't. This one's just grayscale. Uh, another thing you can do is if I come up here, I can, oh, I was going to type in saturation, but I could already see that. Double click that, and I have saturation. I can turn the saturation up so the color's more saturated. But if you're building the saturation all the way down, that's basically the same as grayscale, although you might get a slightly different. So let's let's look at how this looks, and then also let's look at grayscale. So I have multiple effects for this clip. I've got the volume, which is for the audio, and then I have two for the video. Well, if you want to turn off effects, which sometimes is good when you're previewing, if you have a lot of effects, it could affect your processing, you can mute them or hide them, disable this effect. So this is what grayscale looks like. And this is what desaturating it looks like. So there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, so think about that when you're, so this is grayscale, this is desaturated. Desaturating it seems to be a little bit darker, a little bit crisper, I actually like it better than the grayscale. And then if you want to remove an effect, you can hit the little garbage can. If you want to move an effect up and down, you can use these little arrows. And it does make a, a, a difference on what order things are in. So for example, if I was to add in a contrast effect and a um, brightness effect, and you have also sometimes things are keyframeable. So if you want it to start off, brightness is just going to be set the brightness. Keyframeable means that you can have the brightness change throughout the clip, you know, so you can have it go up or down. You can make it start off really bright and then get darker. Anyway, I'm just going to click brightness for this. So. Here I can turn up the brightness and I can turn up the contrast. So obviously that looks horrible, but let's just see what happens if I move brightness before contrast. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Our picture completely disappeared. I can turn brightness down. And it's because the brightness, it's making it brighter and then adjusting the contrast, or I can adjust the contrast and make it brighter. If the contrast is adjusted first, you're going to uh, have a little more, um, more stability on that. That's not really the right words for it, but so, and even moving the, our saturation down to a different level will affect that because the, the brightness and contrast is looking at the colors rather than a grayscale. So that's something to think about in all video editing. You know, the order you add effects uh, will make a difference. So that's how you move those with those little arrows and the little um, garbage can will remove those. Uh, now, effects that I use most commonly, I'm just going to type fade here. You have fade from black and fade to black, and then you have fade in and fade out. So fade in and fade out are audio. So let me just for, just for fun here, I'm going to add a clip. I'm going to add in a song here. 
So here's an audio clip. So I can choose this and I can go fade in, fade out. And by default it adds about a two second fade. And you can see them, the little red lines here. Now I can adjust the length, how long it fades in and fades out. Uh, I can come here and I can choose to choose that clip and I can move this here so I can make this longer or shorter. But another option is if I was to, instead of searching up here, I can come up here to the corner of this video and I can drag this out. So now it automatically added a fade in effect. So, and if I was to go to the end of that clip, I can point here and drag this and now it's gonna fade out. See, it added the fade out. So you can add those clips, th those effects by clicking up there, dragging and dropping them to the clip or dragging the corner over. Now, if I go back over here to a video clip and I grab the corner and I drag it in. Now, video clips, it defaults dragging the corners like that to fade to and, to and from black, which is if you want it to fade out, there you go. Let me mute this audio track. So yeah, so if you want it to fade to in or out to black, that's what the fade in and fade out or for, as opposed to dissolving to another layer. And you can again adjust the lengths of those like so as well. Just remember that if you're pulling the corner, audio is going to default for an audio fade. If it's video, it's going to be fading in or out to black. Now, if I was to remove those fade in, fade out, uh, I'm sorry, the fade to black and from black from the video, I can have fade in and fade out audio effects which I can also do such like this, and I can also have it fade to and from black. So here, the audio is fading in and out, and it's also fading in and out from black, as well as dissolving to another layer because we have this dissolve effect there. So those are things to think about, and I like starting a lot of my videos with fades in and audio, uh, fading in audio and fading out audio, and fading from black and to black. Um, at least when I'm working with actual video clips, which we're going to get more into in the next video, you know, actually editing video clips, not just this little clip from the last tutorial. So I think this tutorial has been long enough. Well, I guess, well, yeah, let's get into rendering. Let's just get right into it. So I have this, this all edited out. It's very simple edit. I have my intro, it fades to my tutorial and then fades to the outro there. Now I'm going to click render. Well, it's also always a good idea to save your project. So I'll just call this Caden Live 1. Um, so that saved the project. So now I can leave and come back and reopen this later on to edit it. Well, now I'm gonna click render and depending on what version, because it seems like every time they do a new release, they change the setup of the screen, but you should have some presets on how you want to render out the video. And of course, you can also customize them. Uh, don't hate me, I'm just gonna choose MP4 here. You, can ha you have this bar for quality. You can also choose more options where you can adjust things manually. It also gives you a little preview here of what render options, so if you want to do a, a a shell rendering of this, you can. Uh, but for right now, you know, I'm going to get more into these rendering options in the next video. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to choose MP4. I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to go here and I haven't created my shortcuts yet. I'm going to go media, data, videos, tutorials, and I'm going to call this one in live Linux video editing number one and then I'll click render and it will start rendering out that video and you can continue working on this project or another project and it won't affect this it will continue to render this out and this clip it says it's gonna take about 14 minutes. I'm thinking it's probably gonna be a little bit shorter than that. Well, and actually, you know, that video's about 14 minutes, so that makes sense. Okay, this is part of a series. Be sure to check out all the videos in the series. Uh, it's, this is part number two, but there'll be more. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those. If you like my videos and wanna support me, you can go to patreon.com forward slash melx1000. 
Uh, and there you can become a supporter. Also, check out my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description to both of those. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.